that's something you need to change for the researchers. Grant them, help them um, to get something back from, uh, for all the effort that they put on collecting, cleaning and, and publishing this data. And I mean, it's the same with, with uh, the, the only thing nowadays that counts is the number of publications with the high impact of things like that. Also, if you're a very good teacher and, and you can, can make your students enthusiastic and, and that they start doing the thing that you want them to do, okay, everyone likes that, but you're not granted because you're a good teacher. And that's the same as the data. If you have a lot of data and make the data available to other researchers, you're helping them a lot. But the university isn't granting that. So in the end, they say, well, your, the amount of publication is below media. So sorry, we have to leave you. Um, and, that's, and, and that is very difficult. Outreach and impact. Um, for me, out, out, outreach is uh, everything that re research infrastructures can do in order to convey research results and new methodologies to the academic community and beyond. Uh, the impact of this activity uh, on research methodology, on research results, is measurable uh, in terms of later publications and uh, in terms of uh, the change of me methodology that we can observe reading research. Um, to put it very simply, if we compare these two terms, these two words, concepts, ideas, I like outreach, I don't like impact. I have a big problem with the way impact is um, used these days uh, for the accumulation of academic capital. Uh, bibliometric methods are highly questionable when it comes to the humanities. Um, the problems, you know, are so numerous, I don't even know where to start. Uh, when you're working on a, as a scholar in a small language, you're, you know, you're a literary scholar, etc. Your community of scholars know your language and they have to read your language and, and the papers you write. If we define impact by simply bibliographic um, methods and you know, so-called high impact journals, we are really privileging those who work on big languages, those who work on English. And I think that's, that's a very dangerous trend for the humanities. So um, in that sense, I'm really not, not a big fan of impact. And I must say that in my career, which, is, which has been maybe unorthodox in certain ways, um, I always wanted to work on things that I'm interested in and I really didn't care so much about the kind of um, impact that I've been talking about so far. Well, that's a um, number of publications, of course, and also recognition in the academic world, which is not always the same. I mean, it's a, because that, that's what I find important, that I, that I have the feeling that I've contributed something to our community. Research infrastructures are just a means to an end. It, it gives people maybe the excuse to go further in what they're planning to do. Um, the biggest barriers, which are, are more on a systemic level, um, you can provide as many research infrastructure as you want if you don't change the system uh, through which researchers are being evaluated, through which research is being evaluated. It's kind of a window dressing exercise. Um, so, well, that's, that's, that's my job, basically. I have to change the system. So what we're looking into is changing uh, the promotion and recruitment criteria for professors, changing the allocation model within the university, uh, changing how research is funded, essentially, and trying to introduce uh, strategic calls for interdisciplinary research centres, focusing on societal impact. Um, it's little things like um, introducing impact paragraphs in our own funding mechanism. Um, it's making lay summaries of PhD dissertations mandatory. There's a whole panoply of things that you can do as a university. 
Um, investing in research infrastructure is just one thing of these things. Um, uh, the unfortunate thing is you need to work on all these levels. Uh, and then there's a whole layer of um, walking the talk, as it were, uh, communicating about the success stories of research impact. And um, I think in, in Flanders we're in this interesting position that it's not being demanded top down that we invest in impact of research. Well, at least not societal impact of research. It's all about jobs and growth and money. Um, so the system that is top down being imposed upon us is still very much geared towards scientific impact. Uh, so we don't have a ref, that's kind of what I'm saying. But at the same time, that's, I think, an advantage because we still, what they've lost in REV, which is namely the administration and the management of REV is putting a bigger burden on researchers than the question, what are we in fact doing? What's the difference we want to make in the world? We're still at the level that we can introduce all these policy elements from this age-old question, what do we think is important? What should universities be doing? What should research be about? Um, but of course, you need the stick and the carrot. So um, what I'm saying is we, we still have this, I think it's a bottom-up drive now, and that's, that's a good thing. And um, we need to take our responsibility as universities then to change the system. And we shouldn't wait for top-down to enforce research evaluation or research funding allocation with impact in it. So we still have time to try some things out and uh, do it without clear definitions on this is impact, this isn't impact. So I think we're in a, an interesting position at this time. Since I, I'm working a lot on, on societal impact and how you can measure it and how you can enable researchers to work on societal impact. So, so that's, that's a trending issue as, as many researchers know. And then uh, I found out about the, the impactor matrix from Daria, which is, I think, a very uh, good example of distinguishing between different kinds of impact. So that's really useful. It has some very, uh, very specific uh, examples. Uh, but, uh, but again, I think we have to take it to the next level. I think we still, uh, uh, since these different kinds of impact are so diverse, I think we really have to think about dimensions of impact. And I think the impact of matrix could be improved. And especially if we work together with different researchers from different uh, disciplines in social sciences and humanities, we could improve impact to matrix and really develop it towards a tool that is useful when we talk with researchers about developing, for example, a societal impact plan. Because from my perspective, that is fundamental. We want researchers to, uh, to achieve societal impact. But that also means that from the early beginning, before they start doing their research, we will have to ask them how, please think about how you, you will achieve societal impact. That's the first question. Uh, of course, the second thing is uh, how will they then eventually report on how did they achieve societal impact? And uh, many people know the, the, the impact case studies from the Research Excellence Framework in the UK. That's a very good, I think, a very good way to describe the process towards societal impact. But a tool like, like the Impacto Matrix could, uh, if, it, if it could be taken a step further, we could even offer uh, researchers different indicators for societal impact. And then, for example, we could offer researchers the choice to choose different indicators and they could uh, then actually go and try to measure societal impact in a very specific way. So, and that's, that's I think, one, um, uh, well, dream is maybe a little bit exaggerated, but still, I think the impacto matrix is a very good first step and we should certainly think about how we can take it to the next level.